A national identification card is very important to you because it allows for the easy transacting of business. Um, it also allows you to save and keep your passport in a very um, pristine condition. And so, welcome to Big Smith News Watch. My name is Leroy Smith and we'll be speaking today with Ms. Yolanda Ward from the Ghana Elections Commission. And Ms. Ward will be telling us about uh, the ongoing registration cycle at this point and she'll also tell us a bit of the importance of why I and why you should become registered. Ms. Ward, welcome to Big Smith News Watch. Thank you so much, Leroy. Thank you so much for having me and good day to your viewers. All right, so let's jump right into what is going on over at GCOM. Um, there's countrywide uh, registration, we call it, right? Yes. yes. Countrywide uh, registration exercise that has started. Mm -hmm. Please tell us a bit. Let's first begin with why it is important and then get into the steps and what is going on between this cycle or during this cycle. All right. Thank you so much. Now, as you're aware, the Guyana Elections Commission, we commenced a cycle of continuous registration on the 7th of March, 2022. And that exercise will end on the 29th of May, 2022. So we have just about another five weeks or so um, for that exercise. Now, it is important to register. Some persons feel that, you know, um, it's optional. Uh, registration is optional. But the National Registration Act, Chapter 1908, actually mandates that once you have met certain eligibility requirements, that you must register. And so for this registration exercise that we have ongoing, um, once you are a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, or naturalization, or a citizen of a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more, you're eligible to be registered. However, there is an age requirement. And so with that age requirement, you're required to be 14 years and older by the 31st of October 2022. Now, the Commission has set that date of the 31st of October 2022 as what we call the qualifying date. So what does that mean? It means that if a child is 13 years old now, but will become 14 on or before the 31st of October 2022, then that child can also register as part of this registration exercise. And so, Leroy, I started on that point of um, the eligibility requirements and to take you into the importance of becoming registered. Now, a lot of times when persons think about registration, the first thing that they think about is uh, the fact that they'll be issued with a national identification mm -hmm. card. But as I mentioned, that the law mandates that you must register. And so once you have registered, it means that your information, your registration information, is entered into a national register of registrants database. Mm -hmm. And so what that affords you is that, one, you're first of all issued with a national identification card. And at the time of an election, your name is extracted from that database onto a voters list. Mm -hmm. So once you're eligible to vote at that election, as in 18 years and older, you're eligible to vote at that election, then your name is then extracted onto a list so you participate in that election. So first of all, it allows you the opportunity um, to be issued with a national identification card. And secondly, at the time of an election, you afforded that opportunity to exercise your constitutional right in participating in the electoral process. Now, during this, elect this registration cycle that we have ongoing, we're actually catering for new registrants. Okay. So you've met the eligibility requirements that I've outlined um, as in 14 years or old and older by the 31st of October 2022. You're a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, or naturalization, or a citizen of a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more. You are, you've never been registered. Um, this is the opportunity you have during this registration exercise to become registered. So 18 year, 14 years and older, by the 31st of October 2022, Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization, 
or a citizen of a commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more, you've never been registered, this is the opportunity you have to become registered. Now we have persons you've already been registered, but you now require to have a change or a correction done to your registration information. This is the opportunity you can have that done. When I say a change or a correction done, I'm going to start with a correction. You might have noticed um, from your ID card that your name might have been incorrectly spelled, your date of birth was incorrectly stated. Maybe it's no um, fault on the part of GCOM because um, the source document that you provided to us had that, that error in the first place. And so you have now managed to have that corrected, that source document, and you want to ensure that that correction is made to your registration record so that now um, is changed on your national identification card. You can have that done. Mm -hmm. Now, for persons who require to have changes done, this is in particular persons required changes to their names, for example. A woman, you're now married and you want to take on your husband's name you can have that done. Persons who might have changed their name because they would have had a depot, um, you can have that done. So we call those change correction transactions. Mm -hmm. Also, we facilitate persons um, who may have lost their ID cards. It has been stolen, uh, misplaced, damaged, destroyed, and they would like to have a replacement ID card done. Here is the opportunity you can have that replacement transactions done. Now, very importantly, um, we're cognizant persons are constantly moving, and therefore, it is important um, for them to do a transfer in relation to their addresses. Now, this is very important because at the time of an election, we want to save electors the time and the hassle of having to travel maybe to long distances um, to have their um, to vote at an election in, in particular. And so you might have had persons who may have moved from Region 1, they're now residing in Region 4. And so it's one a cost implication at the time of an election for them to have to travel back um, to those areas and so on. And so it is important for you to have um, those updates done in terms of your registration record, specifically as it relates to your address. Now, um, I really want to encourage persons to have that particular transaction done. Some persons may have expressed reservations because, you know, they say, no, I don't want my name to fall off of the list mm -hmm. and, and so on. I really want to add to the comfort of persons in terms of our very competent team that we have to um, just alert them that once you would have done a registration transaction with us, um, as it relates to your transfers and so on, that will be reflected. Also, um, as you know, when we get into the period of an election, there is actually a period that affords you the opportunity to check, um, first of all, the preliminary list of electors to ensure that the change that you would have made drew in this registration period, it's reflected there. And if you see that maybe um, something is out of sync, then you have an opportunity to bring that to the attention of GCOM, and then we will revise that, publish and revise list of electors before we get to the official list of electors. So there are ways and means um, of, of dealing with that, but um, I really want to emphasize the margin of error for that is very slim because we take um, real caution in ensuring that um, all our registration transactions are treated um, with a certain level of competence. Now, as we move on into the registration, it's important that once you will present yourself to do a registration transaction, that you are required to provide us with original copies of source documents. When I talk about source documents, I'm referring to things such as birth certificates, um, depot, a marriage certificate, a cert certificate of naturalization. Now, specifically for new applications, um, you can use um, an original birth certificate or a valid passport. For persons who've been adopted, an adoption certificate. If you're using a name change and you have a depot, you need to use your original birth certificate along with that depot, or you use your passport along with that depot so that th that is reflected 
um, there. And of course, I'm emphasizing the importance of original documents mm -hmm. for these registration transactions. And so it's similarly for married women, you're requiring to have a name change. You need to provide us with that um, original marriage certificate. Why, why, why is it so important to have? I think we all know why, but then there are people who mm -hmm. still may not be clear. What is the importance of having the original documents presented to GCOM? Well, of course, we have to verify the authenticity of the documents that you're providing to us. And therefore, and as you know, all our processes are done um, with, in the presence of scrutineers um, from political parties. And therefore, we have to ensure that whatever documents we're using to facilitate this transaction, um, that it is authentic and it reflects what it should, um, the details that we require to have um, for that specific registration transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, how much of what is being done can be done online? Any? Um, no, we do not facilitate online registration. It's important that you have your registration transaction done in person. Also, um, as it relates to that, I want to mention that it's important for you to have your registration transaction done at the registration office responsible for the area where you reside. So if you're living on the East Coast, you need to visit the registration office that is responsible for your area where you live. Once and you registered there previously, oh, well, well, you're speaking for new applicants. Yes. So um, it is important that wherever you reside, that registration office responsible for your area, that's where you go to have your registration transaction done. Um, for persons who are doing transfers in relation to their addresses, you do not have to go back to the registration office where you did that transaction because that might be in Burbies or in, in Linden and you're in Georgetown. Mm -hmm. So wherever um, you reside now, that's a registration office you go to mm -hmm. to have that transaction done. We have um, our internal administrative processes that will be able to facilitate that transaction. But in the case of new applicants and so on, wherever you are currently residing, um, that is the registration office you go to to ensure that you have that registration transaction done. All right, so you've heard from Ms. Yolanda Ward. She's a public relations officer at the Ghana Elections Commission. And we're, entering, well, we're in a phase of continuous registration. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, well, give to the public before we certainly. Um, for some persons, um, as you're aware, they might have done, this is particularly for the first time registrants or applicants who might have done a transaction during the 2019 house-to-house -house registration exercise. And this is specifically for persons who are between the ages of 14 to 17 years old. And I want to emphasize 14 to 17 year olds who were first time applicants during that 2019 house to house registration exercise. And I'm, I'm emphasizing first time because we would have had some persons um, within that age group that would have already been registered and had an ID card. Mm -hmm. This is not for those persons. This is specifically for persons you were 14 to 17 years old at the time of the 2019 house to house registration exercise. And it was the first time you were doing a registration transaction. The commission has canceled those registration mm -hmm. and it therefore means that those persons are required to reapply to be registered during this registration exercise. Any particular so, reason? Right. So um, it has been just about two years since um, those transactions were done and they were just there. And so I think the commission in its wisdom thought it best that it might be better um, for those persons to facili be facilitated um, to have those transactions done. And so um, those persons in particular, um, we want to really urge them to ensure that they use this opportunity to ensure that um, they get those registration transactions um, done um, before the 29th of May this year. Um, I know historically a lot of times um, persons wait until the end of the exercise uh, to get to visit the office. We're still cognizant that we're operating in a COVID-19 season, and therefore we want to urge persons against that. 
that they should visit the office as soon as possible to get their registration transactions done. Um, we have very flexible working hours. Mm -hmm. We work Monday to Friday um, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and we close on holidays. So I think regardless of your work schedule, your very busy schedule, that that time that we're, the hours that our offices are working um, affords you the opportunity to visit to get your registration transactions done. What happens if on the last day of the registration exercise, mm -hmm. I am in the line? Mm -hmm. or, or do you guys work until the line is clear? But obviously if you work until the line is clear, you could go beyond midnight. So how does it work? Well, of course, um, we facilitate those transactions. Once persons are there, mm -hmm. um, we facilitate. Of course, you know, registration is done by way of a gazetted order. Mm -hmm. So the order says the exercise will end on the 29th of May. It doesn't mean that at that time, um, automatically the office will say, come tomorrow. For us, for that to be extended, and at this point there has been no decision of the commission as it relates to an extension. Mm -hmm. But if that is to be done, therefore it has to be done by way of a gazetted order. Okay. Um, of course, that is not the situation at this point. The exercise as it is will end on the 29th of May um, this year. And therefore, we really want to urge persons, you know that you have to get a registration transaction done. Whether it's new application, you require changes or corrections to your particulars, you want to have a transfer done in relation to your address, or you need a replacement ID card. This is the opportunity to visit the registration office in your area. We have 29 offices countrywide to ensure that you get your specific registration transaction done. 29 offices and the registration exercise comes, on the 20, comes to an end on the 29th of May 2022. Uh, is that all for you, Ms. Ward? That's all. My name is Leroy Smith. This has been a production of the Big Smith News Watch. We were speaking with Ms. Yolanda Ward, the Public Relations Officer of the Guyana Elections Commission.